I was making so much money off of my laptop playing video games that I actually went on a gap year, traveled around the whole world and finished my gap year with a profit. I think it's a given that I'm gonna be rich. Bitches on my dick and I couldn't give a shit. Uh, chilling with the actress, we gon' make a flip. Uh, my life a movie and I made the script, yeah. My name is Eliezer and you're watching Cloud 12. The first way I got into music was, I remember when I was like 10 years old, I wrote a poem for the girl that I liked and gave it to her. I think I really started taking it serious. In my last year of high school, I turned to writing songs over like tight beats and beats with my favorite rappers. And since 2015, I've been writing songs every day. I was making songs while I was working at an accounting firm, studying business at university. And then eventually, I had a mushroom trip like mid 2018 that was just like, yeah, this is what you're supposed to be doing, bro. Like, I'm already spending 90% of my time making music and blowing off everything else. I might as well make this my full time thing. And I just dropped everything and started chasing music. I love the way you look tonight. So I met my producer, Jake, playing like a knockoff version of RuneScape when I was 13 or 14. We just like hit it off. We made money together, we would make videos together. And then eventually, when I started taking music serious in 2018, he had been dabbling with beats and we were like, fuck it, let's just do this thing together. And we both just quit everything to chase music. When I was about 16, started making some decent money gambling on RuneScape. Very few people are gonna really understand how that's possible but if you know the algorithms, you can manipulate it to be in your favor. We were basically like running a casino on a video game to the point where I was generating so much in-game currency that I started selling it for real world money. One weekend when I was 16, I made like $3,000, bought a plane ticket, flew to Canada. Making that sort of money at 16, doing something that I like to do, made me realize that I don't need to do a traditional job to make money and you can thrive doing things that you love it was always in my mind like fuck i can do what i want in life and i'll be all right you know 2018 i flew to canada bought a one-way ticket to work on music with some friends in canada i just lived in jake's garage on a mattress that was on a stack of boxes the winter was fucked so cold i remember waking up with like snot dripping down my nose but it was worth it because eventually jake started making my beats and i started recording in his dad's closet and that was like the inception of everything. 2018 was a bit of a weird year in general. I was already smoking quite a lot of weed before I moved to Canada. And then when I did move to Canada, it was legal and available in abundance and way cheaper. Restarting my life, not really having that much direction, I sort of turned to my addiction and just fell deeper and deeper and deeper into that. But it got pretty bad for a little while. I was smoking all day, every day kind of forgot what it was like to be sober. And eventually my brain kind of was just like, nah, boy, this is too much. I went through something called derealization, which is almost like you detach from reality for a little bit. You're not sure what's real. It was almost like I was stuck in like a minor trip for like months. Because that got triggered from me smoking weed, I was too afraid to smoke weed again. I flew back to New Zealand like two weeks into the withdrawals and the derealization. I was like, nah, this is way too fucked up. I got to get home. It made me realize that so much is just going on in my head. Like the entire reality that we exist is a projection of your mind. Because I had done such horrible things to my mind for so long, I was living in a very, very hellish reality. And I started to realize that my detachment from it was because my consciousness was not enjoying the reality my mind was creating. Yeah, I've created a hell for myself, but once I get out of here, I now know that I can create a heaven for myself if I can program my mind in the right ways. I moved to New Zealand in 2011. The move had me fucked up for like at least six years. I was the only Jew, one of the only British people. And so eventually I just noticed myself becoming more and more introverted, more and more anxious. That's when I started to turn to music and I would write songs almost every day just to vent and cope and spill my mind almost in like the form of a diary, you know? It'll start with Tenno sending me a beat and I'll just start writing. And then I'll maybe lay a demo, maybe not. Go to the studio, record that. Once it's recorded, do the first mix on headphones. Jake will then go over it, give me like 20 different pointers on what I need to change. I'll come through to the studio, listen to it on the monitors, tweak it, and then send it off for mastering. There was one moment where I had a gig and I like jumped on top of the railing. There was just like 50 people out in the audience and everyone's hands up and then the song dropped and just seeing a sea of people. Just like little moments with performing, like also another one where they all got their lights out. That shit was beautiful, but nothing compares to the feeling of finishing a song, listening to it and just fucking vibing out, you know? That's literally the best feeling in the world. 
I created the business, Triple One Music Group, to create a persona of professionalism for the music. That way when we released the music, we were releasing it under a label. Eventually it started growing as me and Jake brought Shaden on board to be a manager. We expanded to five of us, which now includes Kevin Liu, the photographer, and James Farron, the videographer. The team has the ability to take it to incredible heights. We just want to take over the music scene in New Zealand and expand globally. All of my songs are essentially a different diary entry, different story, a different perspective, different experience. I'm releasing a song a week, which is essentially, I guess, how I was feeling that week when I wrote it, giving people insight into me as a person and hopefully giving them a soundtrack for their life. It sounds really corny, but honestly, music saved my life. When I feel like the man, I want to write a song about feeling like the man. When I feel sad, I want to write a song about feeling sad. It's my biggest passion in life and I wouldn't want to do anything else. It taught me to be confident again. It taught me to express myself in different ways. It taught me to be creative. I don't know what my life would be like without it. I realized that the whole process is the dream. Embracing the journey, bro, is so important because in five years time, I'm gonna wish that I could spend one day in these shoes. It's not just the Grammys or the plaques or the performing to 20,000 people, that's the dream. It's being shit at the start and then noticing you're getting better and then having your first gig and having your first radio and then having your first documentary. You know, that's the dream. It's not the accolades. So embrace the journey, save the moments because you're only gonna get them once. This one's for my scheme makers, my dream chasers trying to make it. Trust you got to hold on to faith and be patient. I know you're trying to get to the days of elation. And all those obstacles in your way won't deal.